The aviation industry is a cruel and unforgiving place. No matter how good the business, no matter how good the idea, companies often fail due to factors that were simply out of their control. But not only airlines can fall in this industry, sometimes even aircraft manufacturers can make all the right decisions and still fail to succeed. And the Airbus A340 family couldn't be a better example of this phenomenon. The perfect mix of changing times and a need for better efficiency permanently altered the future of this fascinating aircraft. To understand the reason behind the A340's failure, we will begin the story in the late 1970s, Airbus's Sky High. Their first aircraft, the A300, is a hit in the aviation industry. Of course, this success didn't come cheap, costing Airbus over $10 billion in investment. And so, to build on their success, they set out on the next step of their journey. Aircraft such as the DC-10 had long reigned over the 300 to 350 seat market, but the DC-10 was old and had suffered many incidents and crashes. Airlines were going to need a new plane. Airbus was going to provide that new plane. But then Airbus had to face a difficult question. How many engines was this new aircraft to have? North American operators were clearly in favour of a twin jet, while Asian airlines wanted a quad jet. In Europe, airline opinions were split between the two. The majority of potential customers, however, favoured a quad jet, despite the clear fact that in certain conditions, it is much more costly to operate than a twin. They liked that it could be flown with one engine out and could fly anywhere. Now you may be thinking, I see planes every day flying with two engines all across the world. Why couldn't they just have a twin jet? Why do they need a quad jet? Well, this is because of a rule known as ETOPS. ETOPS stands for Extended Range Twin Engine Operations Performance Standards, but in the interest of simplicity, I will simply refer to it as ETOPS. ETOPS basically meant that an aircraft with two engines had to be within 60 minutes of a diversion airport at all times. This rule was strongly enforced. This rule was due to the fact that aircraft engines were much less reliable than today. Famously, when Dick Taylor, who was Boeing's director of engineering at the time, approached the FAA director, J. Lynn Helms, in 1980 about extending or an exemption to the rule, the FAA director's response was, it'll be a cold day in hell before I let twins fly long haul over water routes. A truly chilling response. When designing what would become the A340, Airbus drew from its previous study called the Single Aisle Studies, or SA Studies. This produced three designs which would go on to become a very successful and well-known family of aircraft. You might know it as the A320 family. If you want to learn more about the A320, go watch the history of the A320 after this video. To separate their new projects from the Single Aisle Studies, they renamed their two designs to TA9 and TA11. TA stands for Twin R. TA9 and TA11 later became the Airbus A330 and A340 respectively. In 1982, the first specification of TA9 and TA11 were released. TA9 was shorter and had a shorter range. TA11 was longer and had a longer range. By the time of the Paris Air Show in June 1985, more refinements had been made to TA9 and TA11, including the adoption of the A320 flight deck. Fly-by-wire had also been introduced with the addition of a side-stick control. Using a common cockpit across all the new Airbus series allowed operators to make significant cost savings. Flight crews would also be able to transition from one to another after one week of training. Both aircraft would also use the front and rear fuselage sections of the A310. Components were modular and also interchangeable with other aircraft in the Airbus fleet. This was done to reduce production, maintenance and operating costs. Also in 1985, ETOPS on the Boeing 767 was extended to 120 minutes, which enabled it to fly transatlantic. At first, Airbus didn't see much of a threat. While that meant airlines could fly over the Atlantic, trans-Pacific flights were still impossible with the new ETOPS rule. Airbus might have lost a few aircraft on the books, but nothing severe. On the 27th of January 1986, the Airbus board held a meeting in Munich, after which board chairman Franz Josef Strauss released a statement which would change aviation forever. 
Airbus Industry is now in a position to finalize the detailed technical definition of the TA-9 which is now officially designated the A330 and the TA-11 now called the A340 with potential launch customer airlines and to discuss with them the terms and conditions for launch commitments. In May 1986, Airbus dispatched fresh sale proposals to five prospective airlines, including Lufthansa and Swissair, which are some of the few operators that still fly the A340 today. ETOPS came back to disturb the program in 1988. ETOPS 180 was introduced, which meant many flights were now possible with twin-engine aircraft. By this time, airlines were rushing to gain ETOPS certifications for their fleets. Airlines realized that despite the sheer cost of an ETOPS certification, it was a far better investment than investing in high fuel-consuming, gas-guzzling quadjets. By the time Airbus had realized its mistake with the Airbus A340 project, they were too far into development. With several firm orders for the aircraft, Airbus pushed on. And at last, the time came in 1993. The first Airbus A340-200 was delivered to launch customer Lufthansa. During the 90s, Boeing delivered its first 777, which is now the best-selling wide-body aircraft of all time. As of December 2022, there were over 1,700 of the type. The 777 took advantage of the recent developments in ETOPS and is a twin-engine aircraft with a seating capacity of 310 to 390 passengers. The aircraft was designed to go head-on with the A340. Its higher fuel efficiency and more flexible capacity make the aircraft the obvious choice for the majority of airlines. In this regard, Boeing clearly won over Airbus. Airbus had originally planned to end the A340's production in 2016. However, the aircraft was simply too unpopular and just generally a waste of money. Airbus ended the program in November 2011. After a production life of less than 20 years, it is safe to say that this aircraft failed. While the plane was getting old, Airbus could have made a near variant as they've done with other aircraft in their fleet. But sadly, the plane was so unpopular, any further development like a Neo variant would have made no sense. Roughly only 380 A340s were built, so there was simply no point in further developing the aircraft. Due to a mix of changing rules, better options and low efficiency, the Airbus A340 lost in the aviation industry. However, the A340 did have a saving grace. There were two aircraft designs that Airbus developed, the A340 and the A330. The A330 was to, created to appease the desires of a minor group of airlines who wanted a smaller capacity twin jet. It was predicted to be a very unpopular plane with very few orders. However, the A330 has taken the industry by storm and has become Airbus's best-selling wide-body jet. The A340 also has a successor. The A350 is a modern high-capacity wide-body jet that has taken the industry by storm. The A350 is a successor to the extended 500 and 600 variants of the A340. The A340 is a wonderful aircraft. I had the pleasure of flying on one many years ago, and I must say, it is a wonderful aircraft. Sadly, there are less than 80 still flying today. After a grueling few decades, the A340's chapter will end. It's long unsuccessful career truly shows that you can make all the right moves but in the end you can still lose before the a340 had even flown many things had not gone right for it however the a340 is an iconic aircraft and probably the unluckiest aircraft of all time it is the perfect example of the aviation industry's ever-changing landscape want to learn about the a320 click the video on the left otherwise have a great day Error knowledge over and out.